That's a good question. Honestly, we don't have any document documentation to uh, have an accurate amount of the workers. Um, the estimates are from a couple hundred to almost a thousand. So, again, though, uh, and the reason why we don't have a lot of documentation is because there are a lot of undocumented workers. <laughs> so, you would think, looking at a beautiful building like this, the construction was um, the architects behind this, very experienced. Well, that wasn't the case. Their names were Thomas Hastings, John Carrer. They're in their early 20s. So this was their first major project. How did they get a gig like this? Well, Thomas Hastings was actually the son of Henry Flagler's minister back in New York. Um, and so I like to think back in the day, it was still all about connections, connections, connections. So anyways, to stay at this beautiful hotel, there are two requirements. First, your name had to be on the National Registry in New York City, so that meant you had to have a very prestigious name and background. Second, you had to at least have $100,000 handy because that's how much it costs to stay here for an entire season. You couldn't book for a night, a day, or a night, a week, a month. It had to be for an entire season, which was from January to March. Now, if you're moderately wealthy, uh, but your name wasn't on the National, National Registry, no worries. You could always stay at the Alcazar Hotel, which made up part of the winter reserve here in uh, St. Augustine. Now, by no means was it a poor man's hotel as they came to call it. Uh, that's where the up and coming entrepreneurs were to stay. Also to that the winter, uh, the uh, luxurious side of the resort, or the, uh, the entertainment side rather, that's where they had casinos, that's where they had the world's largest indoor swimming pool, as well as the well bowling alley, and a state of the art gymnasium. Now I want you guys to look at the walls up here. And you'll see uh, the United States' first large project of pouring concrete. And the way they do it, they get two plates of wood, they pour the concrete, let it dry for a couple of days, then pour some more, let it dry, pour some more, let it get into lines. Now I want you to look at the gargoyles. Does anyone know what their function was? Does anyone want to think of that? You would think, but actually no. Uh, back in the day, they had red light bulbs. That's because this was the first building in the state of Florida to be electrically wired. It had electricity nine years before the White House. And this was done by Thomas Edison's company. Originally, it was DC. In 1893, they rewired it to AC. Uh, that cost about $60,000 uh, in that currency. Today, here is a cornucopia in her hand. She represents her. And this woman right here, she's in white. She has eagles on both sides of her. She represents. You guys know your elements. In the fourth element, the big blue ocean, she's got a globe in her right hand. Now, after the discoveries, what do the Spanish do? Think back to their history classes. Think about the Incan Empire, the Aztec Empire. Conquest. They went on conquest. You can see that woman right there. She's sitting down. She's wearing a red garment that represents war power. She has a sword in her right hand and it's in an upright ready position. Now the fourth and final stage is what the Spanish believe the most important stage, which is civilization. You can see that woman, she's sitting down right there. She's wearing a white garment to represent purity. She has a book in her hand, a law book representing law, order, and knowledge. And there you have it, folks, the four stages of Spanish exploration. Now below these women are names. They're all Spanish explorers save for lunch. And that's going to be Jacques Rabot, who's a French, French explorer. Well, how did John Tile? Now, 150 men were working on this 24 7. So, they were three shifts, 50 men per shift. You could come here lunchtime, dinner time. You could come here midnight, and they were still working on this floor. Now, remember that fourth theme I keep telling you about intentional imperfections, right? I'm going to show you one right now. So, looking at the circle, you're going to see the design right here. You're going to see the black triangles. And there's a white piece right here. It gives it a three-dimensional flavor. It looks almost like a ribbon. Well, coming down right here to the center, you're going to see this black triangle, and it's the odd man out because it doesn't have a white piece of tile. Instead, it has a black one in that corner. While the story goes, Henry Flagg the Watson's in his beautiful rotunda said, Wow, this place is just beautiful. It's perfect. 
that can't be. So what they did is he had a worker remove the white piece, put a black one in its place, and there you have it, folks, an intentional imperfection. But let me tell you this. There are other imperfections here on the floor. These are going to be unintentional. And I'll show you one right now. So you're going to see this checker design, right? Black squares, white squares, pretty typical. But this black square has a white square. That's going to be an unintentional imperfection. But like I said outside, whether, this imper whether any imperfection is intentional or unintentional, it should not be something that is criticized, rather that's something that is appreciated. Because while you're looking at this, all you're doing is self-reflecting on the imperfection of humanity and therefore appreciating what is perfect, which is God the Creator. And that was the intent of those imperfections. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our third stop, which is the beautiful dining hall. I just want to tell you, students have the fortune of dining there during, during school, and it's just spectacular. Now, the guests would go through the grand staircase, but you guys just aren't any guests. You guys are a special guest, so you're going to go through the VIP entrance that Henry Flagler himself, as well as John D. Rockefeller or Teddy Roosevelt would go through. So if you want to follow me. Now, there are stairs. Is that going to be an issue? Oh, okay. That's okay. Yeah, right here. glass is a lot thicker, the pigment is a lot heavier than his later works. So that's because, again, this is an earlier work. This was his first major project here at the Ponte Leon Hotel. And second, too, this glass was supposed to last for durability. Well, it's proven its worth after 125 years. It's still in its original place. Now, if you want to look to where I'm pointing at right here, you're going to see a very detailed, very typical Tiffany glass style with a goblet, the fire. You're going to see that in the dining hall as well. Now, to my left right here, you're going to see, of course, Tiffany glass. This is very ornate, very detailed, and you can't see through the other side. You're not supposed to because that was actually the cigar room. The men didn't want anyone to see them smoke their big cigars, drink their hard liquor, and boast about being masters of the universe. So also, too, I want you to look down, and right here on the floor, on the sides of the carpet, does anyone want to take a guess at what that is? Leather, yeah, correct. Well, does anyone want to take a guess to why they had leather floors? Silence. Silence, as well as that window. Can't get a little. Did you feel a difference? Yeah. 
Well, this is actually a 125-year-old Corsair. And originally, Henry Flagler wanted to use Spanish moss. Well, you guys know that's a bad idea. Henry IV found that, found that out the hard way for two reasons. One, it's an air plant. After you pull, it's going to continue to grow. Second, two, if you don't boil it, your bottom's going to itch because they're going to be ticked. Uh, the reason why he wanted to use Spanish moss is because it was more readily available and it was cheaper. Well, someone had the uh, hindsight to say, let's not do that, let's use Corsair. And I appreciate that because then we wouldn't be able to admire such a beautiful chair such as this. Now, another difference is going to be the wheels. To tell you about the wheels, I have to tell you about the function of the dining hall. Now, this could house up to 700 guests. There were 100 tables. And as a guest here at the hotel, you were assigned a table. So what you would do is, when you're ready to dine, you would walk up to the entrance. Mind you, you have to wear your vest. So unfortunately, you and I, we wouldn't be able to dine here. So they'd walk up here. At the entrance, they'd be an array of 100 buttons. You'd push your assigned button to your assigned table, and your personal waiter would come, bring you, leave you, take you to your table, out the chair and push it in. Now, like I said before, everyone was wearing their best. For the women, that meant an additional up to 20 to 50 pounds of clothing. And that's why we have the wheels right here. Now, I want you to look up and you're going to see this beautiful mural work. You're going to see the four themes that I pointed out before here. You're going to see the Spanish theme, the galleys, and this week, and each week right there, you're going to see this coat of arms. They represent various provinces found in Spain. Moving up here, you're going to see this old Spanish facility. And they're actually Spanish odes. One of them says, eat soup before the hand. A second says, beer, bacon, and wine get better in time. But then I had someone read that one to me and say, no, Matt, it doesn't say that. In fact, it says, beer, bacon, and women get better in time. Well, he liked this blue so much that he decided to use this in his later creations. And that's where you get the iconic tip we blue box. Now, I also want to point out years. These two years, two dates, Henry Flagler had put up on the ceiling, 1512 and 1887. Now, he put those up there because he believed those were the two most important years of St. Augustine's history. 1512 being the belief date that constantly on his account in Florida, and being very confident, and he believed that 1887, the year that this building was supposed to be open, at its opening, was the second most important year. Well,